Fortress 2 is a game developed by Valve, and it is one of the best class-based shooters of all time, more so than the Russian Revolution in 1917. TF2 is also one of my favorite games. How favorite? 2,420 hours and $895 favorite. That's not a joke, I've dropped more bills on this game than a landlord presiding over a single mother. With that being said, I'd like to expose the wonderful world of Team Fortress 2, and with the 15th birthday of the game nearing... Oh, wait a minute, I wrote this script like fucking several months ago. Shit. Well, what better time than to put aside my other projects in favor of this one? So, select your class, set your loadout, and join me in a comprehensive and despicable review of the best game to fuel my loot box addiction. Team Fortress 2. If you've been living under a rock since 2007 and haven't heard of Team Fortress 2, I'll kindly ask you to check out the Journalist Machine, aka the Wood Chipper, and dispose of yourself. For those that aren't journalists or dumb fucks, let's continue. Team Fortress 2's gameplay can be described as organized chaos, much akin to the traffic in New York City. For a new player, there is so much shit happening on the screen, it's harder to take in than Johnny Sins. With that being said, some of this gameplay may look confusing or bizarre, but believe it or not, this is what fun gameplay looks like. If you're reminded of Overwatch by looking at this game, I don't blame you, because it came out before Overwatch and hasn't lost server support. God, I hope that'll age well. You see, unlike Overwatch, where the gameplay is oriented around a competitive, fast-paced, alt-spamming, hero-hogging style of play, Team Fortress 2 says fuck it, and has no abilities, no alts, and yes, you can stack classes. But why is this important to the gameplay? I hear your thoughts. Well, in 2007, when people made video games, they thought of what was fun and exciting, instead of what's effective and stylish. Team Fortress 2 has plenty of flaws, don't get me wrong, the fact that it hasn't had a major update since I was in 8th grade being one of them, but it's because the community is so based and the gameplay being fun and engaging, it makes it last longer. Way longer than a modern game, with updates. That's how epic sauce TF2 is. But besides just general gameplay, there's different modes to take on. These can range from payload, where you push a comically large pipe bomb to someone's front door, control points, where you grab land faster than the United States in the 1800s, and king of the hill, where you hold a single control point and drink beer. There are also alternate game modes such as football and two fort but epic. These game modes are fun, but what's even more fun are the nine classes used to play this game. Unlike games such as Overwatch and Rainbow Six Siege, there's only nine playable classes, with no more and no less. You may think to yourself it'd be boring once you played them all, but that's where you're wrong. All classes have a fuck ton of weapon unlocks. It makes me feel like I'm a terrorist getting a loot drop from the CIA. It's awesome. All the weapons are unique and add different effects to you, who you shoot, and how you play. For instance, you can turn the Demo Man, a primarily explosive wielding class, into a Scottish swordsman, whose melee becomes his primary as he screams bloody murder charging into battle and lobbing someone's head off. This may be the best game ever made. I mentioned one of the nine classes here, but let's talk about them more in depth, as the characters of this game make me excel vigorously and wish they were real. There are nine classes, segregated into three different zones, offense, defense, and support. Though you may think the defense classes should only be played on defense, you are mistaken. Demo Man, as mentioned before, has the most DPS potential in the entire game without the sword and shield. Believe it or not, grenades hurt, and multiple grenades hurt more, but we'll get there. Let's start with the offense classes and move forward from there. Starting off the roster is Scout. Scout is the fastest class and is a registered sex offender. That is not a joke. He uses his speed to his advantage, and more importantly, his fucking shotgun to blow someone away. His secondary can go from between a few pistols and a literal jar of semen. Don't worry, it'll get worse. His melee consists mostly of baseball bats, or of fish. Though he's the weakest class in terms of health, he can run circles around the competition and cap points twice as fast. He's the strongest man in Boston. Next is the Soldier, who is the coolest American-loving, gun-shooting, rocket-jumping, wizard-roommating, crocket-spewing badass this side of the Badlands has ever seen. Yes, I did say he was roommates with a wizard. That is not a joke. The Soldier uses a literal rocket launcher to not only turn people into their base atoms, but also defy all logic and reality by doing the video gaming move known as the rocket jump. Let me say right now that rocket jumping is 90% of the reason I play Soldier. The other 10% is because he likes guns and hates communists. His secondary is a shotgun, just in case you're a little too close to someone, because yes, you will blow yourself up. His melee is a shovel or a pickaxe that doubles as a suicide bomber. Finally is the mass maniac maimed by every furry known to mankind, Pyro. Pyro is one of the three classes here I play the most of, and there's a good reason. And no, it's not because I'm a furry. His flamethrower sets people on fire, duh. 
and has a special ability known as Air Blast, where if you right-click, the thrower will simulate a night after Taco Bell and extinguish teammates, reflect all projectiles aimed at you, and can push enemies. However, due to the low damage, Pyro relies on the element of surprise to kill. Him and the Viet Cong would hit it off together. Not only does she hide in the trees, she's able to combo with her shotgun or flare gun secondary to incinerate someone so hard, the Fuhrer would be proud. Her melee can range from a fire axe to a speedy hammer or the zapper slapper. Pick which one you like and see the world burn. Moving on to the defense, we begin with God's Drunkest Driver, Demo Man. What makes me a good Demo Man? If I were a bad Demo Man, I wouldn't be sitting here this... Demo Man is unique for a very specific reason. So much so, people dislike him for it. He uses only explosive weapons. That's right, I'm not racist, I'm explodophobic. Demo Man wields a grenade launcher which fires pills that do 100 damage on contact, which will two shot 90% of the gamers. His secondary is a sticky launcher, a gun only Satan could love, as it fires eight sticky boys onto a surface and can be remotely detonated. On top of that, Demo Man has a subclass, which involves a pair of Persian Nike sneakers, a shield, and the sword from Braveheart. This is Demo Knight. Demo Knight is a subclass who relies primarily on melee and turns the match into either A, a horror game for the enemy team, or B, murder bumper cars. Moving from the endangered black Scottish Cyclops comes the most verbose man in the game. I've yet to meet one that can outsmart a bullet. If he actually decided to speak Russian. Yep. It's our PhD in Russian literature, Heavy. Heavy is quite simple, really. You have a big ass gun with a big ass magazine that you fire at big ass idiots. Heavy is the tankiest class in the game with the slowest movement speed. He's essentially a walking armory because his loadout consists of a minigun, a shotgun, and his fists. But his shotgun could be switched out for a literal snack food to fill it up to full health. Yes, from 1 HP to a little 300 with a few knobs. Heavy is an excellent class to simulate an A-10 Warthog, and the enemies make excellent target practice. The one downside to this beefy boy is Spine Sniper, who are your direct counters. You see, your minigun may fire a lot of bullets, but they don't go very far, and, well, snipers can. Spy is an Eldritch Horror beyond comprehension, who we'll talk about later. Finally, wrapping up the defense class is the Engineer. Engineer is an interesting class because he doesn't rely on the physical gun that he holds. Your gameplay will be around the various buildings Engineer can construct, ranging from sentries to kill the oblivious, dispensers to heal the weak, and teleporters to move bread filled with crack. Oh, and your teammates, who are also filled with crack. Engineer is a super support, able to balance damage, defense, and healing all at once. From microwing your buildings to saving someone's life, Engineer is Engineer and could possibly be Engineer, at least in the fans' head game. Finally are the support classes, and starting off is the secretary of Himmler, Medic. Medic, believe it or not, is the healer of the game. His ability to heal with the medigun defies all logic and science, which is just common at this point with this game. It can give an overheal buff and turn you invincible for a short period of time with your heal target. Medic is a great class, but you also need to fear for your life. The opposing force will be running and gunning for you faster than the FBI towards JFK. Be careful when playing Medic because he might be able to give therapy to your team and change the tide of battle, but you will need therapy yourself after playing him. Next is the little Aussie piss boy, Sniper. I told you the jar of condiments will get worse. Sniper is... Guess what? A Sniper. He uses a sniper rifle, a jar of piss, and an Australian kitchen knife to skin his foes. Sniper is a class people hate, as he can instantly do 150 damage with a quickscope headshot, can be overhealed, and be able to prevent backstabs from enemy spies all within the confinements of several continents away from the battlefield. You may think to yourself, wow, this is overpowered, but you may also have forgotten that critical hits exist on Soldier and Demo Man, along with the fact that Sniper can't do shit without a head to shoot. I'm not saying he's unbalanced, I'm saying you're bad. Finally, rounding off the nine classes in T42, is the spy, a man who unlike his mains get pussy and has felt the touch of a woman. And to top it off, he's French, with a son, who is also the scout. The spy is arguably the hardest class to understand in the game, more so than Robespierre's logic in the French Revolution. Spy is the sneaky assassin who can cloak, insta-kill backstab with his only weakness being enemy awareness. Spy thrives on the murder of ignorant morons, just like Sniper, but he can do some decent damage with his revolver and backstab with his knife. 
Oh, he can also disguise himself as the enemy team, but that's really obvious, so don't rely on it too much. It has its perks, but just don't make it a crutch. Now, as fun as it would be to cover the lore of this game, there really isn't much, at least in the realm of logical science. This game's story makes less sense than Payday 2's, and Payday's story is some Hyperborean bullshit. I won't cover TF2's story, as it's not integral to the gameplay. However, if you're interested in it, there's plenty of comments out there to read. There's a few last things I want to mention, such as the co-op mode. It's a fun robot murder fest, where only six team members must survive waves of deadly robots. It's a lot of fun and a good mention, but it's not integral. There's also a hat economy. Yes, this game is literally making its own virtual civilization. Move out of the way, Dogecoin. We have refined metal. So even if the gameplay doesn't intrigue you, perhaps the $14 sombrero will. Another cool thing to talk about is Source Filmmaker, a program used by content creators to make fun animations, posters, and hold the TF2 community together for another update. TF2 has been alive and kicking for 15 years, and it's only getting better. And finally, this game is fucking free. It cannot make you poor. Not like I'd know. And it is an awesome experience. Play it by yourself, with friends, and with the poorly programmed tutorial bots. But play Team Fortress 2. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. I want to thank you for your support on my last shit show review and applaud you for making it to the end. Tune in next time for a Race War Fortress where I kill Lightning McQueen.